Hello YouTube. So, today is the August update and we've got lots of news. Lots of little changes, lots of big changes, a whole ton of gear. We're going to be starting, this is going to be the first video of a series. I'm going to be releasing one a day over the course of the, starting today for probably about a week um, to keep things in more manageable chunks. So this video is going to be on the update, what the devs have told us, what's going on with Sortie as content, and a couple of the really cool quality of life changes we've gotten from this update. And then we're going to be moving on to individual videos covering all the gear, and some of it is really good. So uh, definitely tune in for those. Let's get started with the digest video and see what we have in store for this month. Let's go. Hi, nice to see you again. The new battle content is ready for you to play. It's actually not ready. オペノミンさんこんにちは。FF11プロデューサーの松井です。はい、ハローエブリワン。こんにちは。ディレクターの藤戸です。え、8月のFF11ダイジェストのお時間です。はい。今月のWeareGonnaDealUpdate。ファン
harder enemies. Aside from upgrade materials, you can also obtain old cases. They're going to tell us what the old cases are. Appraisal items, but unlike previous ones, they'll change into job specific gear equipment upon use. Oh, ear equipment. So old cases are nothing until you appraise them and they're going to change into JSE. JS ear. <laughs> I'm coining that. となっていますけども、え、従来の未完成品とは違って使用すると助手専用の耳装備に変化します。はい。その他の詳細についてはバージョンアップ情報をご確認ください。The miscellaneous updates are good too. So this is referring to the Rima um, ammo belts for Corsair and Ranger. Sunbreeze and Green Festival? Have they ever run two, um, what do you call these? Two, have, they, have they ever run two festivals at once? Green Festival え、今回は新たな報酬アイテムとしてモルボルエプロンが登場します。期間中に樹の仮装にオープンするモルボルカフェのショップをチェックしてみてくださいね。それでは今回のFF11ダイジェストはここまでです。また次回のダイジェストで
uh, Records of Eminence has undergone the following additions and adjust adjustments. The monthly Record of Eminence objectives have been swapped out. That's your monthly ROEs. A new designation has been added. That's a title most likely related to uh, TVR. Okay, here's the further info I was talking about. New battle content known as Sortie has been added. Um, sortie is an instanced battle content that plays out in Outer Rakazner. So uh, I had actually guessed a while back that Outer Rakazner might be the place because it's kind of unused otherwise. Um, and they had mentioned like Adeline being the place for Sortie and it's like, well, what else is there? You know, unless they're reusing Vagary specifically, uh, what are they going to do with Inner Rakasner? So it makes sense that Outer is the place. Pre Prereq have completed Adeline Mission Chapter 5 up through the Light Within. You don't actually have to finish, finish Adeline. You can actually just get close um, and, and be here. So that's not too bad, actually. Uh, most of it is game day waits, to be honest with you. A lot of cutscenes and game day waits. I just recently did this on uh, one of my characters. Be in possession of the scintillating Rhapsody key item. We're going to go over shortly. Um, oh, no, no. So, no, that's from ROE. So, from ROV. Uh, beat ROV, the end. Scintillating Rhapsody, yes. So this is be finished with Rhapsodies of Vanadil and be up to mission uh, chapter five in Adeline. So there you go. If you needed any more reason to do ROV, here it is. As if, as if that's a thing you need a reason to go do. It's just super valuable uh, baseline. Requirement to participate. Be in possession of the shiny Rakasnerian plate key item. Now this is the thing that's gonna take a little bit of explanation. Players may only possess one of these items at a time. Enjoying sortie. Speak with Rustbix and Lefalia to obtain a shiny Rakasnerian plate key item. First one's free. The party leader should interact with the diaphanous transposer in Khmer Drifts F6 and select sortie. I hope that's near, uh... <laughs> oh, you know what? That might be on the exit of Inner Rakasner, I guess? I don't... Where is this? It's near um, Bivouac 4. So yeah, come here, Drifts, Bivouac 4. We'll get you to the Sortie entrance. That's kind of interesting. <clears throat> if all party members meet the requirements for participation, the party will be entered into the queue, interact with Diaphanous Transposer again to join. So you queue up, you wait for your message, and you, um, you then go in. Upon entering the instance, the shiny Rakasnerian plate will transform into a dull Rakasnerian plate. That's important going forward. Second and subsequent attempts. Players approaching the Diaphanous Transposer after at least 20 hours have passed since their previous attempt will find that their dull Rakasnerian plate will transform back into a shiny Rakasnerian plate, then you'll be able to enter Sortie again. So, it's a 20 hour lockout. With a catch. And we're going to get into that. Between one and six players may participate. You can use trusts. All participating players must be in possession of a shiny plate. The time limit is one hour. Oh, I didn't realize this is an hour. I was looking for this information. I must have skipped it. An hour is awesome because an hour is, is, a, is like a good time for content. That's like you feel like you're, you can, you know, do what you want to do. Um and not be like rushed. Wow. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just happy about that. An hour a day with a catch. And we're gonna go over that in a second. Rewards. Vanquishing foes will reward you with Gallimaufry, the currency required for reforging. Rakasnerian sapphires, also required for reforging, will drop from NMs in sortie and can also be purchased with Gallimaufry. Treasure chests that appear once certain conditions are met can also yield Gallimaufry and Rakasnerian Sapphires. In addition to the above, players can also obtain old cases which contain augmented JSE earrings. The Gallimaufry and Rakasnerian Sapphires are personal rewards. Super good. Gallimaufry is retained 
between sortie attempts and can be viewed at any time via the currency's two menu. Oh, they implemented that rather fast, actually. They've been kind of slow in implementing currency currencies into the currencies menu. Decreasing time required for entry. After you complete sortie for the first time, you can receive a plate by speaking with Rustbix. Okay. After entering sortie a second time, and this is the this is the important thing. After entering a second time, your Rustbix's plate will be charged up with energy, accumulating time equal to one fifth of the time that exceeded the 20 hour waiting period since your previous sortie. So there's three different types of 20 hour lockouts of KIs in the game currently. So, version three of this same kind of system. You have a KI, the goblin is storing your KI, but only accrues energy equal to one fifth the amount of time spent. So, because it normally takes 20 hours to charge a regular KI, you, let's go back for a second. If you, if your KI is empty completely, it's going to store at regular interval. 20 hours, you're going to have a new one. After that, it's then one fifth the time. So it would take, what is that? A hundred hours in order for you to charge a second storable KI. Now, why do I bother explaining all this? Because of the difference in systems, it's kind of like it's kind of not as good as any of them. <laughs> so, like, you might think to yourself, okay, the, the Moogle version is superior because it means you always have two, you know, you'll have one KI, and then after 20 hours you'll have another KI, and then um, that's it, right? So you've got two entries. The, the only thing that this, this version of this does is makes it feel like you're not wasting time. Like you literally have to not be playing for a hundred hours after your entry. No, 120 hours. So say you go right now, 120 hours later, you'll have two KIs to use. So I think that the intent here was to eliminate the feel bad of, well, I got to go on vacation for the weekend or I'm away with family. My my Odyssey KIs are just sitting. They're not, I'm not gaining anything. I'm not gaining any time. They're just going to waste. Now it's a hundred hours before you start feeling like you're wasting time. Ultimately leading to the same amount of entries if you go every day, but less entries overall, right? So, uh... I like the idea, and I like eliminating feel-bads. I think that's a good design decision. However, I don't want to feel like hour-long content daily needs to be done. Take that for what it is. I'm, I'm interested to hear your opinion. Post your opinion down below what your feelings are in these three different KI systems. Because they're different, but they're kind of the same. And Omen got their change rather early on. Why has Odyssey not gotten a change yet? Is this too too much of a daily feeling for a grind? Or is the uh, is the ability to kind of like wait and space it out actually good for your schedule? Anyway, uh, let's move on with the rest of the description here. The YouTube video is going to be spot on. No commercials. Assuming you have YouTube uh, Prime or whatever. Once Rustbix's plate has been stored an amount of time equal to the amount of time you must wait before entering Sortie again, you could speak with him to convert the dull Rakazarian plate into a shiny Rakazarian plate. That's what I just went over. Leaving Sortie. Using the spell slash teleport or similar effects. Using the obsidian wing upon available upon entry. Reach the time limit. Have three minutes elapsed after all party members have been knocked out. This is good. You can leave using warp and teleport, so we're not concerned about um, having to like hit. Like, there's no um, there's no end conflux that's going to give you bonus points if you hit it. As far as we know. All right. 
There's more um, really interesting stuff at the bottom of the update. Right now, we're going to go over Ambu. Ambu has undergone the following adjustments. The mobs have been swapped out as normal. Exemplar points are no longer lost in normal or intense ambuscades. Oh, yeah, uh, exemplar points will no longer be lost, which is good. Now we just need that in, uh, in uh, Odyssey, and then we'll never lose points. Intents have undergone the following adjustments. A visual effect will now display when Bozetto Ramu activates a special ability when using Astral Passage. Uh, astral Flow. Is that a mistranslation? And this is nice, I think, because once it uses its SP, I forget, there was like a... Oh, that's when the summoner shows up. Thank you. That's right. When it two hours is when the summoner shows up. And then the Bozetto Doppelganger is the summoner that that normally runs away from you. Now it'll be um, susceptible to gravity or bind. The Bozetto Doppelganger now has a resistance against all forms of damage. The amount of damage reduction is unchanged. Interesting. This is going to be... Uh, I'm, I'm actually interested in trying this. Normal has undergone the following adjustments. Oh, this is the... Um, this is supposed to be like the idols battle. The, the different uh, morbles are like in a pop band together. They have had their attack delay increased. Okay, so they're slower to attack. And their impale has been nerfed. And a golden bomb will appear when conditions are met. This is fun. This is how you make a battle for people who are like trying to like kind of gear up Ambu on their own. Um, Hallmarks have been swapped out. Gallantry has been swapped out, of course. Okay, now here's the start of what is really interesting additional notes. New status ailments, Tainted and Haunted, have been added. These status ailments cannot be removed by white magic, abilities, or items. Whole new status ailments. Uh, how It's been a very long time since... I, th I think, what was it, Amnesia was added back in, like, uh, Treasures? Um, interesting. So, I mean, either way, it's been a good long while since we've had new status ailments. So, this is, uh, this is interesting. New items have been added. Obviously, we're going to talk about MP plus 2. Additional slips via Portamoogle, slip 3. A method of reobtaining certain ammunition. So if you dropped your uh, quiver from your Yoichi or your Gandiva, your belts for your bullets, basically if you have any of these Rima ranged weapons and you put one Astral Detritus into them, they they no longer produce ammo as a weapon. They, it then gives you a belt that produces that ammunition. If you had dropped that belt in the past, you would have no way of reacquiring it. So... Um, now you can, obtainable once ever. So, uh, yeah. To receive one of the applicable items you have lost, you may speak with munitions and trade the applicable base weapon. Each item may only be reobtained once. Yeah, once ever. Yeah, I mean, this, this is for people who did it accidentally, I think, before the uh, recycling bin was added to the game. Okay, moving on. System related. Exchanging items with the Void Watch Officer and Void Watch Purveyor is now done by manually entering the amount you wish to exchange for up to 99 may be exchanged at once. This is huge. If you've done Void Watch, you should know. I mean, you should be doing it with one Cobalt, one Rubicon cell per Void Watch pop, especially and even during campaign. I've had arguments with people about this, but you can check the charts. You want to be using one blue and one red cell per pop um, during Void Watch campaign. You had to trade for these stones 12 at a time. But if you're doing it during campaign, you're going out there with 200, 300 uh, fights that you're going to do. So you need 200 or 300 red and blue cells for your time out there playing Void Watch, you could trade them 12 at a time. I mean, I would literally get hand cramps. I would I would go and I would do all this well before I thought of going out to Void Watch because I knew that my hands were going to hurt. 
So now we can trade them 99 at a time. It's going to be done super quick. Um, I mean, this is one of the quality of life that you absolutely need. And to the type of thing I would, I would complain about endlessly, but would, would never hope for resolution because it's such old content. Who cares? The devs aren't even thinking about it. It's not on their radar. Heck yeah. I think I've got like 600 stones on Quetch. Um, yo, what's up, Tamoli? <laughs> I've got like a bunch of stones on Quetch and maybe some on Cashew as well. Um, so, yeah. The following currencies have been added. To, so, yes, big thumbs up for me. The following currencies have been added to the currencies two menu. DI points. This is ridiculous that this hasn't been here already. DI points earned today. That's actually nice because the only way you would know that earlier is if you went and did the fight again and you're like, did I get enough points? Yes, you did. Mog segments. Thank you. I mean, Odyssey's only been out for over a year. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said they were really quick on adding Gallimaufry to this chart. Um, like, look at this. Look how long it take them, took them to add DI points. It's been like like three years the DI has been out. Mog segments been out for over a year. The amount of time new players and returnees are allowed to speak in the assist channel has been increased from 48 hours to 240 hours. I, I don't understand why there's even a time for this. I think that this should be like a month. If you're you're if you're gonna play this game and you're gonna I mean maybe 240 hours is maybe enough. That's like 10 days, right? So 10 days, maybe 10 days is good. But basically, if you're looking for assistance as a new player, it's gonna take you more than 10 days to to ask your questions. Um anyway. Uh, a new term has been added to the auto-translate function, sortie. Makes sense to me. Some kind of issue with Locus Calibri where action logics in battle was incorrect. I think, honestly, I'm going to tell you what I think this is, but I'm sure Chad already knows what it actually is. I think they were using, con um, I think they were eating food too often. I genuinely think that. So, I don't know if there was a logic for it. And it's probably wrong, but I felt like they were eating food too often when I was out there. The issue in Ambuscade where Bozetto Vivian would fail to properly consume TP when using box step. Okay. So here we have Ranger. PDL 7, Enmity 7, you know. Freaking ear slot, man. That's insane. I mean, you just don't get this type of DPS output in an earring slot. Um... Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And don't forget, let's not forget. That's the NQ. There's a plus one and a plus two. Sorry, 9% PDL and nine, minus nine enmity. This is big damage. You're in big damage territory right here when attack capped. Uh, and, and you're combining this with like uh, hover shot stacks. I mean, this is a this is a straight gain. It, it, this might as well say like weapon skill damage plus ten on it, but this also counts for your white hits too. Like, good stuff. If you're not on board with PDL yet, um, start looking into it because it it's massive. All right, so that's a uh, ranger. Very good earring. Scholar, Mab seven M, M damage seven or. Mab 9, M damage 9. This is a good time to say, as of the recording of this video, we have been told, as was read in the patch notes, that these earrings will be augmented. As of the filming of this video, I have no idea if that means augments as we know them, such as the um, uh, earring from uh, uh, Wings of the Goddess, where you get to choose a couple of augments, or the items from Abyssia, where you get a random roll of an augment. We don't know if they mean augment like that, or if they're simply referring to the fact that you can get a plus one or a plus two version of something. I suppose the high roll, if they're trying to do like a lot, like a lottery style system, the high roll would be a plus two earring with a high augment. So, which is kind of fun. I, as long as the base is this good, or in this case, this good, I'm happy with a, man, I, I found a really rare earring for my 
thief tonight feels good man you know i i like that as long as the base is good and i think that the odyssey armor did a good job of this as well where the base was good but if you want to pursue the stronger stuff it's also stronger you know so anyway that's uh that's the scholar straightforward mab 9 m damage 9 you never know there could be augments on this that say something like um you know re, uh refresh plus three you know we don't know and we 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 won't know until um somebody finds out or they release uh sortie to actually be played next earring geo um mab geomancy skill 10 two things i'd like to say about this first of all note that this is right ear only and all the earrings are so i'm not quite sure why uh why that is if anybody in chat has any insight into why they might be doing that um but uh the second thing i'd like to say about this one is geomancy skill is largely unnecessary on geo you'd have to be a very new geo to make use of the amount of geomancy skill that has been placed on this earring and the plus two set alone like a very new geo like not even close to mastered so i'm not sure why they think giving us geo skill is useful for i mean you're expected to have defeated rov you're expected to have like get, gotten towards the end of adeline i mean you can't get a couple job points like i don't know anyway um again there could be augments on these that make them that 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 like if this is just an afterthought rather than the main you know the main meat of the item fine but we won't know for um some amount of time now the summoner earring is busted i mean look at this thing let's just look at the plus two because it is so refresh plus three in an earring slot is unheard of uh refresh plus one and there we have one refresh earring in the game and you have to choose the refresh augment over tp bonus plus 250 which is like one of the best gear augments you can obtain for melee dps and and magical based weapon skills okay someone is just getting a refresh three earring just like that also avatar level plus one always handy every single avatar level plus plus one means you have a stronger avatar like like stat and skill wise in addition to that they had to up the ante a little bit here they also inc Im Im included blood pack damage just to make sure that when you put on this amazing earring and take off your um quested earring right there's like uh there's like two earrings summoners were using prior to this right um uh what's it called there's a quested earring i i forget anyway y'all y'all know the earring i'm talking about cath plug earring has refresh plus one okay so there is a second earring what jobs are on that though oh it's summoner only so yeah so cath plug earring here you go real quick chat so there's two that i know of i'm sure chat's gonna figure out more but whatever i know of two now <laughs> um but yeah oh off the charts good uh yeah summoner got a little spoiled this um this release which is good because they were kind of falling behind actually which is okay summoner still needs to find its place in the current meta it's still too niche i don't yeah anyway uh it's a rant for another day bq earring plus two uh the monk earring hand-to-hand -hand skill plus 12 counter plus nine i would say that for a counter build for monk uh this is uh this is a good thing um this isn't a busto earring like some of the other jobs have, but 9% uh, counter is really high. I think they were getting like 80 something. What What is the number chat? Who knows? Isn't it like 80, 82 or something is the cap for counter right now with counter stance up and, um, and the relic weapon upgraded? 80 is max. Does it cap or is that just what we can currently reach?
frees up a good DT or multi-hit slot. That's cap. Okay, I remember now. 80 is cap, but the gear you have to use to get there, some of it's a little outdated. So now by adding in this earring, you can put in, as chat is saying, more multi-attack or store TP or kick attacks or I, I, I don't know, whatever. So um, this earring existing is helping a niche build free up some of its nicheness. It's nichety. Careful how you say that, Scoot. All right, now um, on to a personal uh, earring that I'm happy to see is the uh, Warrior Boy Earring. Um, double Attack 9 uh, in my Ukenvasara AM3 builds that I am currently using in Odyssey Segment Farm. I am using Sheer Earring for its 6% DA and Brutal for its 5. And uh, this is higher than that. So um, because of that build, the way it uses uh, Sekpata and um, Relic Legs, it's got a slightly lower double attack. Like I could get it much higher if I swap like to the um, Artifact Feet, for example, um, or, or Artifact Legs. But I, I, I like to build the way it is. And um, this earring will help make up some of that double attack I've lost. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> Misa. <laughs> what was next? Uh, Corsair. Now, um, this is just bad. I mean, look, I've said Corsair for a while now. Corsair, there's like, there's like two, maybe, there's like three jobs in the game that I think are perfectly well-rounded, balanced jobs. And I think Corsair is one of them. Now, a lot of people say Corsair is too powerful. And... That was really true when they had Savage Blade that was putting up numbers that it shouldn't have been. But now a lot of that has been homogenized by Naomi. And I think that Corsair, while its buffs are still obviously very strong, it's just so well-rounded that... Um... Anyway, Corsair, Rune Fencer, Red Mage. They can just do all the things their job wants to do really well now corsair when shooting from from a distance is not as good as ranger which it shouldn't be corsair when slashing with a sword is not as good as real slashing jobs you don't have a lot of dps tools corsair with leaden salute in particular battles is extremely powerful um rune fencer can tank all the things um it can parry all the things it has a lot of special dt versus elements it has a lot of mava um, it can also be a good DD in a pinch, or, or if you set it up to be. Red Mage, similarly, doing all the proper buffs, doing all the proper debuffs. This, I think this is one of the ways you, de I think this is one of the ways you, you, you nerf the job. You just don't give it as good of items as you're giving to other people. Uh, Enmity minus nine and Recycle plus 12 are negligible. R uh, I mean, okay. Last stand on core will occasionally take more hate than you want it to. You're not putting this item in your last stand uh, set. Recycle is worthless. It's like you can serve ammo more often. Nobody's worried about ammo in today's day and age. So to me, this is how I see a way that you don't, you, you just don't, you don't keep giving core more when it's already got everything it needs is what I'm getting at. Boo, it's not that great. But at the end of the day, the job is still well-rounded and able to do what it needs to do. Paladin, um, I think this is a, this is extremely good. Uh, I don't know what you're. I think you're usually tanking now. The lack of HP on this is bad. Um, yeah, hype for it. Yeah, shield skill, defense, cure potency. This is what Paladin should be doing in a world where MLs have given us shield skill in a way that has made us. Um, uh, be able to block more with every with other shields other than o-chain um and now they're giving us they're kind of pushing us a little bit more pushing us more into the defense aspect of the job the curing aspect of the job through majesty i think this earring represents uh the niche paladin has been recarving out from its previous um sort of like top of the roost like place it used to be as the like the best tank uh rune fencer for a long time was sort of inarguably the best tank and now um paladin's been gaining some market share back on to ebers 
Healing skill plus 12, enmity minus 9. Misa, why is this good? Relic head? You realize it's on core, right? Core doesn't, uh... Core doesn't get the um, Ranger Relic Head. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if it were on core getting recycle in the earring slot, I would say okay. If it had recycle in PDL, I'd be all about it. Yeah, no, this is not good. Um, this earring would be better on Geo, sadly, because Geo needs all the healing skill it can get in order to um, properly heal a party. If you even play Geo in a job in a in content where you can heal anymore, who knows? Sorry. Sorry, white mages. Hopefully this augments for you. On to Rune Fencer. Um, Mava plus 20. Potency of regen effects received plus 12. While I think this is very good, if a white mage is going to be casting regen on me and I got to swap into this earring, eh, it's going to get a little obnoxious, but plus 12 is a huge potency. That is a really big potency. So... The lack of HP, I don't think I could, um, in, unless there's HP augments on this, I don't think I could justify wearing it in my tanking set for the Mava. No, I don't think ever that would be the case. Um, really, really, I'm going to be using Adnawa or, and Twisto are the, are the two earrings I'm going to be equipping most of the time. Feely, the Bard earring. Singing skill, enemy minus nine. Boo! It's a mid-cast earring, which we really didn't have. Um, we don't we don't actually know what they have, Noki. And the thing is, the the verbiage is weird in the uh, in the update notes. That's the thing. I I would agree with you. Like, if we get like if we get like three or four slots of augments or something, yes. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway. We don't. We just don't know any augments right now. Um, Midcast earring is a strange thing to have. On top of that, actually, bards generate a lot of enmity when singing, and there's been many times where I've had a bard or I've been a bard and I've had to sing mid battle, and by the time I have somebody's full song buffs up, I've pulled hate. You know, in addition to the fact that bards typically melee nowadays. So, I actually like this. Um, as a mid-cast earring, which, uh, again, is not a thing we typically have. On to Blue Mage, Hashish. Uh, sword skill, blue magic skill. This is a joke that SE is playing on us. I guess blue magic skill, the more the merrier. I guess. Sword skill. So you're telling me you get 12 accuracy, 12 attack maybe? Um, again, these may just be tangential to the, uh, to the uh, augments. We're going to have to wait and find out. Hattori earring. Ninja. Katana skill. Throwing skill. PDL 9. Whoo! So much PDL in the earring slot, man. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna push the lower tier DDs higher, giving them access to way more PDL than other jobs is one way to do it. In a world where we're often going into fights with uh, you know like soul voice buffs nowadays, yeah, and a plus twelve katana skill, yeah, yeah for sure. The earring definitely makes up for it. I mean, this is... Other jobs are envious of that. You know what I mean? Um, not dark, however, because dark gets PDL 9 attack 20. Just, like, straight up, like... It exists. <laughs> There's no skill. It's just attack 20 PDL died. <laughs> GG, dark. <sighs> Puppet Master. Hand-to-hand -hand skill, subtle blow... Automaton level 1 in the earring slot is best in the slot. Easily. You you don't... Um, uh, 
you you don't get uh you don't you don't come by these easily and every one you get you take so good stuff here um and even the uh nq even the like like this is an earring where you can literally just take the nq one and be happy the rest of the stuff is just uh extra unless of course the augments change depending upon the level of the earring uh store tp9 skill chain bonus nine on sam i mean stp9 and an earring is unheard of um oh well dedition is eight and dedition has long been the earring for um stp base builds and uh red mage just or uh sam just straight up get a straight up st straight up gets a nine so congratulations i don't know if you'll use it over double attack but uh the sams will tell me Red Mage. This is bonkers, too. Look at this thing. Fast cast 9, enhancing duration 9% on an earring. Freaking Red Mage gets gobs. Absolutely gobs of enhancing duration. Ugh. Just makes me jealous. I cast haste on Geo, and it's like 4 minutes and 1 second. <laughs> it ticks down to 3 the moment you cast it. No, I think I have like a 5 minute haste. But uh, fast cast nine, not super necessary. Yeah, probably not even useful actually, in the earring slot for red mage. All right, here we go, dancer. Oh yeah, ah, it's so good. I mean, this is—you can't ask for better than this. Between honestly, if you gave me just this and the headpiece. I'm happy. The hands, extra 25 TP. The feet, 1% extra critical evasion down. The body, bad. The legs, bad. I guess all I do get is the head and the earring. Ah, oh, so good. And exactly, you're, you're losing Naomi head from now on, but you've just made up for it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Ah. All right, here we go. Beast. Um, also, this is this is off the charts good too. You get your summon pet level one and PDL nine and axe skill twelve. Win 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 for Beast. Very good. It's exactly what you want to help bridge the gap between where Beast is at and other jobs are. Um, well, and here is Dragoon I'm talking about bridging the gap. We've widened the gap. Wyvern level uh, also adds like attack to the Dragoon. PDL9 to make use of all those Savage Blades, uh, I guess. Um, yeah, good stuff. Dragoon, of course, can always use more PDL. Let's see. Uh, Thief. Beautiful, beautiful earring. The, the feet are nice for Dancer. You can't always close position. Uh, yeah, the feet are also good for TP purposes, yeah. And they help you skip, um, malignants. Yes, I do agree with that. Uh, this thief earring is fantastic. Uh, triple attack plus five in the ear slot. Also unheard of. Um, this is nuts. I think this is more than the thief, uh, plus two neck. Yeah, thief plus two neck. Four percent triple attack. <laughs> so friggin awesome all right and lastly oh, yep lastly the witch a earring magic attack bonus plus nine magic damage plus nine it's better than other options marginally it does what black mages want to do and that is nuke stuff kind of sucks i agree <laughs> All right, y'all. <sighs> uh, all right, um, YouTube, I have no idea how this is going to be spliced into that first video, but uh, those are the accessories. Definitely check out the um, uh, equipment videos as they go live over the next five days or so. Um, but if you're watching this after that, I don't know. What are your thoughts on the gear? Leave a comment down below. Tell me if which piece of these you're which tell me which of these accessories you're excited to get first. Uh, 
I think I know mine. It's somewhere between thief and dancer and warrior and rune fencer and <laughs> I don't know, all the jobs I play and have fun playing. But uh, that's going to do it for um, the accessories. Uh, yeah, anyway, peace out, YouTube. All right, so uh, once again, sortie is out, but the NPC is not in existence, so you can't actually do the fight. Um, stay tuned for further videos as we're going to go over. I'll just give you, I'll just give you a teaser. Let's see. Uh, we have all of the um, plus two gear for the all the jobs and new JSC earrings as well. Stay tuned for the next video. Definitely, it's a good time to be playing FF11, friends. Finish your ROV if you haven't. You're going to need it. Sortie, hour-long content. Pretty much a daily lockout. It's a great segment of time to uh, get in, get into the meat of it, and feel like you've accomplished something. Definitely... Check it out. It's free login period right now as well. So if you're watching this video roughly around the middle of August, you still have a good like week and a half to uh, play free login. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, YouTube.